Hello everybody. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about arrays. Uh, now there are three kinds of arrays. There are single dimensional arrays, there are multi-dimensional arrays, and there are jagged arrays. We're going to go ahead and start with the most basic of them, which are single dimensional arrays. Now, before you can use arrays in C sharp, you need to understand a few things. First, uh, in order to access arrays, uh, they are an object type inside of C Sharp. So you need to go ahead and call the library that actually provides them, which is using system.collections.generic. This contains arrays, lists, and dictionaries. Something else you need to know about arrays are that arrays are kind of like uh, having a series of buckets. Mm -hmm. Now when I go ahead and create an array, um, I have to give it a size. So let's go ahead and see that here. You know, I also have to give it a type. So let's say I want to create an array of strings. Mm -hmm. Now right here is where I have to say how big the array is. How many buckets does this array have? Let's say it has three buckets. Yeah. That's like going ahead and saying that my array is like this. I've got one empty space, two empty space, three empty space. I've created an array of three buckets of size three. Uh, and it is a string array, which means that my array can only hold strings. Now that's the next thing you need to know about arrays. Arrays can hold a single data type. Uh, unlike some languages, especially scripting languages like Python, where uh, the typical concept of an array is actually more like um, a, a dictionary or a list, but you can go ahead and mix and match data types. C Sharp, it's a strongly typed language, which means that you have uh, to go ahead and work within certain data types, and you must define those data types. So with arrays, whatever data type my array is set up to hold, that's all it can hold. Now, to go ahead and access the different buckets of my array, you do that doing things using your zero based index. So if I were to say zero here, this is going to access my first index and I could assign a string. I want to access the second index and the third index. If I wanted to then after the fact change what was stored in an index, I could go ahead and just re-reference that index and go ahead and give it a different value. Now this is not the only way to define an array. This is how you go ahead and define an empty array. Let's say I wanted to define an array with existing values. Stick with the example of a string array. New string will make this one of size two, so we don't have to write as much. And then I can go ahead and say, And now I've gone ahead and created an array with two buckets, and I have initialized it with two values already inside. So index 0 and index 1 already have a value, unlike my first array where the indexes were empty. Now this can actually be shortened to just this. And it'll go ahead and based upon the fact that I defined my data type up here when declaring my variable, it will go ahead and infer what type my array is. And as long as I go ahead and actually use that type, um, I can go ahead and declare my array right here without having to declare a new instance of the object. 
um, it'll go ahead and just take care of that on the back end for me. Uh, now the other thing to know about arrays is that they are of fixed size, which means I cannot add or remove buckets from my array. I cannot go ahead and try to call something like string array 2 dot. You notice there's a length, but let's see, is there an add? No. Is there an insert? No. Okay. Is there a remove? No. Delete? No. Okay. That's because arrays are of a fixed size. Once I declare my array, whatever size it is, that is the size it is going to remain. I can go ahead and change the value that is held at any individual index, but I cannot go ahead and change the size of the array. My string array up here will always have three buckets, regardless of the value stored in each bucket. Now, multidimensional arrays. Multidimensional arrays are like declaring an array I'm going to use an int here, um, with more than one row and column. Okay. Up here you can go ahead and think of this as, I have created an array, a single dimensional array. So it has one row and it has three columns, okay, based upon the size. With multidimensional arrays, I can go ahead and create an array of different rows and columns. So this one right here would be the equivalent of saying I have declared an array of two rows with three columns each. So if you want to go ahead and see this written another way, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, two rows, three columns. And how you would go ahead and access different values uh, or modify different values in an array like this would be to go ahead and give it both the row and the column. So if I wanted to change row zero, column index one, this value here, the two, I'd write zero, one. So I'd go to the very first row and I'd go to the second column. And I could change that. And now this multidimensional array would look like this. Now, jagged arrays are a bit more complicated in that they are arrays of arrays. You can go ahead and you can store arrays within arrays, and they can be of different sizes, hence they are called jagged. Uh, now, we're not going to go ahead and go over jagged arrays here. Uh, they, Because of their nature, um, I personally don't tend to use them often, and I don't see them used very often, but I will go ahead and link to the documentation um, about jagged arrays, as well as both single and multidimensional arrays. And again, this is just a, a brief overview of arrays, and you can find a lot more information about them in the documentation.